Hey guys, how's it going? Derek Crick here. Sorry, excuse the formality. Um, this isn't for you guys, but <laughs> I keep getting a bunch of emails and notifications from comments on our YouTube channel about math and science and proficiency and what to expect as a petroleum engineer in your career. If I don't do good in one class, but so usually lots of times it's like it's like chemistry, physics, or one of the math courses typically people are asking about. They're like, if I don't do well, do I just pull the plug? Do I stop there? Or is it, you know, is it going to be detrimental or, or whatnot? So just wanted to kind of talk to that for just a moment. Basically, guys, regardless of which engineering firm or form that you take on, whether it's chemical, petroleum, um, electrical, whatever it is, right? An engineer inherently should at least be capable of solving math problems. It's not that we have to recall all of that off the top of our heads or know exactly what equation would be appropriate for what, or even that we use high levels of math every day. Um, Cause that's definitely not the case, especially for petroleum engineers, at least the normal petroleum, maybe someone who's in research or somebody who's really deep into solving a, a, <laughs> an issue, right? Or something, I don't know, um, a research firm or something like that. But for the most part, we don't use it a ton, um, like advanced math daily, right? But again, inherent in the word engineer is that if we need to, uh, you know, if, if somebody on the team needs to be able to figure out a complex issue, that's going to come to an engineer. Um, so again, it's just the, the ability to be able to figure out how to solve problems, right? That's essentially an engineer, right? So bring that back to school. So when you're in school and you're trying to get through all of your math, all of your science, all of your curriculum, right? And we're all going to have a class or two that we don't like, right? That, that we're not going to be able to ace or whatever, you know, your, your typical grade would be that you can't get it, right? That, that you have issues with that. It just doesn't click for you. Maybe your professor sucks or whatever, whatever it is, right? One class is not going to define you, okay? But at the same time, if you're struggling with math and science topics and that's starting to show in your transcript, companies are going to be more hesitant to hire you, right? Again, because inherent in the word engineer is that we at least can comprehend and understand and know what's going on, right? We don't have to be perfect. At, we don't have to ace every class, right? But again, we're the, the folks on the team that's going to get those types of questions. So we at least need to know how to navigate and handle it. So that's kind of what they're looking for, right? So no, one or two classes does not define you. If you, if you suck at physics, you know, as long as <laughs> don't suck at everything else and you'll be perfectly fine. Right. So, so get help as much as you can, right. Have good study groups. I, I stress this in, in some of the videos I've done, get a good study group going, um, get other students involved, um, you know, with, with why you're studying, you can learn from each other, right. Go to, go to office hours with the, with the professor, um, Khan Academy, right. Whatever it is, like there's a ton of resources to get through, especially those common topics, um, like that any engineer would take, so like the physics, like, you know, the chemistry is the, 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 the calc one, calc two, the differential equations, right? There, there's help for that, okay? So don't let that stop you. Don't let that derail you from your career. Power through it. Um, no, it's not gonna define you. Uh, but again, if you completely suck at math and sciences, all of them, um, regardless of what you're doing, it maybe that's a sign, right? Maybe at that point, it's a sign. But no, one class does not define you. And, and so hopefully this was helpful for you guys to help um, place kind of, the, you know, the day-to-day uh, what to expect, I guess, as a petroleum engineer. And like I said, I don't, we don't use <laughs> complex equations much at all. Uh, at least I haven't and anything I've been through. And again, I'm still young in my career anyways. But like I said, I think there's, there's certain positions that you would, but for the most part, for the most part, no. So follow your passion. Um, don't let this derail you, um, you know, one or two classes or whatever, whatever that is. Uh, keep throwing questions my way, guys. I really appreciate that, especially um, those of you that are students trying to figure out what it means to be a petroleum engineer and, and to not be um, scared to go into this as a profession. So leave comments, leave questions. Um, I like to get them and eventually after good enough of them, I'll throw a quick little casual video together at the very minimum. But anyways, thanks everybody that, that commented and pushed me into, into doing this. Hope it's helpful. Like I said, leave any additional questions you have and check our resources online too, guys, as you get into more petroleum related content. Uh, we've got a lot of content uh, from different aspects of the industry that we actually have professionals working in the industry. They're the ones that have made those courses. So a lot of good content there for you guys to chew on. We have the video blogs we have like this. Um, we have the podcast coming up on 100 episodes now um, talking to professionals across the industry. So 
Use all of those resources as well. Um, use wolfofbasics.com. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, and like I said, please keep leaving comments and questions and everything. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Have a good day.